Morning everyone. As you can see I'm standing here with the cows. So this this uh, mob of cows is our heifers and mixed age cows. Uh, so a couple of videos back someone um, pointed out that I was sort of making the grazier sound like you didn't do a good job. Uh, I didn't mean to do that. So what I was getting at was some of the heifers. She's not too bad. She's a, she's a good size. But a few of the heifers, like this short on cross, so she's not the best example, that ginger one there, uh, she's a short on cross. She looks a bit light and, is, and quite a small gut on her, whereas also, oh that one there, well she's empty, that's not a good example. But um, yeah, a few of the heifers are just smaller they don't have much of a gut so you know like they they appear to lack a little bit of capacity um as alice they call it capacious um yeah so that's what i was really getting at is the eight that came back later they were a lot bigger framed animals bigger guts you know they look all around they look better whereas there's a few that came back from the grazier that look a bit light but You've got to bear in mind that we've had a couple of good droughts, so so these uh, these heifers would have been at the runoff. I would have looked after them as calves, so it could be my fault. Um, and then they've gone off to grazing. We've had another another pretty good drought, not as bad, but the issue was that this season or last season, everyone struggled to get rid of well, not everyone. Some of us have struggled to get rid of cows off to the works, and he. Our grazier struggled to get rid of his, um, I think they're called hoggets, or you know, lambs off to the works. So, yeah, I'm not, I'm not blaming anyone. I just have noticed that we have some smaller heifers, and they could have an underlying issue. It's not all of the heifers that came back from his place, just some of them. So, yeah, it's just an observation that I made, but I did sort of make it sound like. He didn't graze them very well, but. Too well through the accelerator. The spring's actually gone. There's normally a spring there onto the bottom of that. Yeah, it's broken. I need to get a new one. Just any old spring will work, but it still works because there's enough weight that holds that down on there. So I just noticed that um, the cows had no water, that's why this pump is not, um, this pump isn't uh, actually pumping any water. Who's going to shut that tap? We've got this other pump over here, this one here is ready to go. So we'll just open this up and there she goes. It'll take a little while for it to catch up because there's um, no water in a couple of troughs so. I'll actually just turn this pump off, which is that one. We'll get that sorted another day, but this pump here will be enough to run the farm. During the winter time, just one of these pumps running is more than sufficient. Uh, so, yeah, it's only in the summertime where we really need to have both these pumps going just for demand. Because the demand is higher.
Right, so I'll just uh, answer a couple of questions about the the urea and pasture spraying. So, um, what we are doing uh, with this is we're dissolving urea. So there's about 30 kgs of urea in here, and I fill it up with cold water, and then I put the submersible pump in and just recycle it until it dissolves. Normally it'll dissolve in a, like if I'm doing a load of urea, by the time I get back it's dissolved so you can carry on going. Um, but yeah, what we're doing at the moment with pasture spraying, so we're spraying on dissolved urea and we're spraying on gibberellic acid and we're also spraying on preside. So preside is a pasture spray, so it's actually um, it's a spray that's going to kill flatweeds, um, buttercup. It doesn't do Kelly Thistle's dock. Um, it will kill some of your thistle, uh, your flat thistles. I don't know what they're called. Um, and ragworts, it's baby ragworts. Um, and gibberellic acid is promoting grass growth when it's cold. So it's just a spray that goes on the leaf and promotes it to grow when it's cold. So it tricks it into growing. Um, and the uh, urea is just, um, well obviously it's dissolved so it's going on at a, a lighter rate so the urea is going on at about two and a half to three kgs a hectare um, so in here I've got enough to do three loads and um, the reason why we pass the spray when it's cold is because my dad was recommended that doing pasture spraying when it's cold um, the clover is dormant so um, you won't knock the clover around so much with the pasture spray with the preside um, and he also does the preside at uh, at half rate so the preside just been put on at a half rate at, and it works uh, I can show you later on the bits that I missed um, but yeah it actually does work um, yeah but we don't necessarily spray when it's frosty um, it's just when we start spraying because we want it, we want it to be cold and that uh, last week was actually our first big frost um, so yes yeah, so we started spraying now um, but one of the things with the urea just the cost of urea at the moment per ton I think it's up around twelve thirteen hundred dollars a ton of urea so um, this might be something we look at doing I have thought about doing it all year round it's just a lot of work it's a lot of there's a lot of cost like you got the cost of diesel um, so uh, I'm in two minds I'm not against I'm not against um, spreading I'm not against spreading your rear like that but um, it's definitely cheaper to do it this way but the reason why I tend to do it this way at this time of the year is because you're going to get less leaching so when you spray it on it's going to be more effective it lands on the leaf promotes growth whereas the urea is landing on the ground and with the this time of the year we get a lot of rain so it can cause it to wash away um, so that's leaching obviously going down the drain so yeah that's um part of the reason why i spray it on so hopefully i covered everything uh, i've probably forgotten something i feel like i've forgotten something but yeah just uh and put any questions in the comments and i'll have a go at answering them if you want to know more we've just been to town and got some strainers so we're going to go and um do that fence line but first i'm actually going to go and get the seed drill out of the barn and bring it down to this barn so that i can get to the hay we want to start feeding hay out of that barn so yeah, a few little jobs and then we'll get on to um getting that fence in the ground
Ele. I thought our cows were out, but it's actually the um, <clears throat> neighbors grazes the maize stubble or the corn stubble, whatever it is. So it's not our cows, so it's good. Anyway, so what we've got going on here is we're putting a new fence from this strainer up to that gate just up there and then down to meet the other fence. <clears throat> so it used to be a, this is a dirt race. There's a little bit of soft rock here. They put a bit of soft rock in the bottom, but it doesn't go there. One day we'll put a bit of soft rock in there. But what I've done is um, I've taken a bank. I'll put a picture of what it used to be like, but there was a bank along the edge. You can sort of see where the paddock goes out like that. Well, I just took that right off. So any water coming down this race now can just run into the paddock. And I also put a bit of the clay from there. I built up this corner. It sort of probably used to be, I think it was about here. So I've added on a meter. So I've got a long strainer to go in here because it can go through the soft dirt and then into the hard ground below just to hold it. And I've got two other strainers to go in up there and then it'll just be post between. So yeah, Mateus took the wires off a few weeks ago. I pulled the post out yesterday and then flattened all this out. So yeah, let's get on with it. Well, that's all the posts in. Uh, didn't have too many problems. Only problem I have is this ground here tends to make the posts move that way. It's just the nature of it. And I did put the wire on the wrong side of the strainer right down the bottom there. So a couple of posts have got to move back a little bit, but I'll be able to do that with a spade. But yeah, otherwise, uh, good job done. So now, not sure whether I'm going to put the wires on today. I might get one electric wire on uh, the neighbor does have some fencing I'm gonna see if she wants me to go and do that uh, after lunch so yeah time for lunch so all right, we'll carry on all right so we're back where we started off this morning back with the heifers and mixed age cows um, they always look better once they're out of feed people say oh, there's no grass here they've had their feed for the day But they are actually, they're looking, they're actually looking pretty good. Weather can, um, I reckon, determines quite a bit how cows look. Sometimes they can look really good, sometimes they don't look very good, just depending on the weather, the day. But um, they had nice weather today, so they've had a good feed. That's a nice looking heifer, that one. So we've still got to tag, we need to put the orange tag in there, their herd tag in. So see that heifer directly in front and the ginger one, they're a bit lighter. It may be because we didn't uh, scan, we may have a couple of empty ones. They could be just empty, that's why they look like they're quite hollow, but that's all right. Cow? Where are the cows? Where are the cows? Alright, so I didn't end up getting any wires on the fence. I ended up mowing my parents' lawn. Um, so, yeah, that's going to be it for this video. And we'll catch you somewhere else on the farm. See ya.